on occasions such as this, at the passing of a devoted friend and brother, it is customary to carry the craft to the symbol in this way to give homage and last respect. The most wishful sons of the light Grand Lodge do now hereby call his craft for this occasion to give the last rites to the past Grand Master, Honorable Frank Joseph Bobo. The ceremony shall be performed by the right wishful Junior Grand Ward, Junior Grand Ward, Will Yancey. From the times immoral, it has been the custom among the fraternity of ancient, free, and accepted masons, at the request of a brother, to accompany his remains to a place with his family, and there deposit them according to the solemn formalities of the crown. In conformity with that usage, and in accordance with the duties that we owe to our departed brother, we have assembled here in the class of masons to offer up this memory before the world, the last tribute of our affection thereby demonstrating the sincerity of our private esteem, as well as to the many attachments that we have to the principles of our beloved order. The Almighty Creator, having been pleased in His infinite wisdom to remove our brother from the cares and troubles of this transitory life, has thereby severed another link in our fraternal chain of which we are all bound together. So let us that survive him, the utmost cement by the power of brotherly love, and that in the short space of time that we have allocated to us here, that we may wisely and usefully employ our times. And in the reciprocal intercourse of some kind and friendly acts, willfully promote the welfare and happiness of each other. All merciful Father, into thy hands we commend the spirit of our beloved brother. The will of God is accomplished. Amen. 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 Brethren. Once again, we've been called to perform the solemn duties of the dead. The mournful note that betokened the departure from this earthly tabernacle has once again alarmed the outer door. And a letterhead has been taken to swell the numbers into the unknown land where our fathers have gone before. Our brother has reached the end of life. The brittle thread which bound him to earth has been severed and delivered his wingless flesh back into the unknown land. The silver cord is now loosened. The golden bowl is broken. The picture is broken at the fountain. The wheel loose at the system. The dust will now return to the earth as it was, and the spirit under God is gained. Brothers, we all know that life is so uncertain, and that all of our earthly pursuits are in vain. But we can no longer postpone that all important concerns for planning for eternity, but we must embrace the present moment while time and opportunity are offered to provide against that great change when all the pumps and pleasures of a sleeping world shall fall upon us. And the recollection of a virtue and a well-spent life yields to us the only comfort and consolation. But we shall not be unprepared and hurried into the presence of that all-wise and merciful judge to whom all the secrets of our hearts are known. But in that great day of reckoning, we too may be ready to stand and give a good account of our stewardship while here on earth. I would like for the brothers to now assist me in the last grand public Masonic honor. Will of God is accomplished, amen. So will it be. Amen. So will it be. Amen. So will it be. badge of a mason. It's more ancient than the golden fleece of the Roman eagle, and when properly worn, more honorable than the star and garter, or any other order that can be conferred upon any man by king's prince or potentate. Our Grand Master wore it with pleasure to himself and honor to the fraternity. I place this on the casket of our beloved By this act, we're reminded of the universal dominion of death, how the arms of friendship cannot oppose the king of terror. 
how the seal of paternal love cannot protect his victim, nor can the charms of innocence avert his fatal touch. All must die. But how comforting it is to know that our Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. This evergreen, which once marked the temporary resting place of one illustrious in Masonic history, is an emblem of our enduring faith in immortality of the soul. By it we are reminded of that imperishable part of man that survives the grave and bears the nearest affinity to the supreme intelligence which pervades all of nature and shall never die. Go ahead. And finally, my brothers, though like our brother Bobo, we too shall be faced with the abilities of death, but yet through the love and goodness of our supreme grandmaster, we may confidently hope that like this evergreen, our souls shall flourish thereafter a eternal stream. When the arms are crossed upon the breast, we cherish his memory here. When the arms are extended above the head, we commend his soul to God that gave it. When the arms are lowered to the side, we countersign his body to the earth. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust, there to remain until the trumpet sounds of the resurrection. Our brother has gone on to the long sleep of death. And so profound shall be that sleep that not even the great shakes of the California quakes will awaken it. 